Hello, everyone. Welcome to, gosh, how many of these have we done, Denise? A lot. Coffee classes. Well, since the, first, the beginning of the year, so Hello, I don't, I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> I feel I feel like we've had some we've had such great contents. We we haven't run out of things to say yet, so that's exciting. <laughs> There's just yeah, <laughs> or we just talk a lot. <laughs> we do talk a lot, but uh, that's okay. So anyway, I am Sarah Fuda. Oh, I'm Denise Anaya, and we're with the Fuda Home Team, and this is uh, part of our Cafe y Casas webinar series. Today, we're going to be talking about purchasing new home construction. But before we do that, and we'll remind you at the end, but Denise, I think it's worth reminding at the beginning, we got free coffee Friday coming up on uh, March 15th. Yes, at Convivio Cafe from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. So stop by, get your free cup of coffee. If you want to chat with me about real estate, that's great. If not, you get to walk away with free coffee. So I know. I mean, doesn't get much better than that. If you haven't been to Convivio Cafe, it's it's so great. Their coffee is awesome. Their purpose is awesome. Um, it's near 38th and Sher 38th and Sheridan, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's such a great place. So uh, you should go visit them anytime. But if you want us to buy your coffee Friday between 8 and 9 a.m. So yes. <laughs> with that said, let's talk about new home construction. This has been a hot topic lately um, just with excuse me, lack of inventory and, um, you know, special financing and all sorts of stuff. So I think we've got a lot, to, a lot to talk about. Um, what I want to start with, though, is, and now let's make sure I pull up the right tab here. Um, I want to show a few slides that I think just really set the stage for, you know, what's going on with new construction. And let's see. Is this showing up on everyone's stream? Yeah. I can't tell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So this is a graph that shows you kind of historically what um, inventory is on the market. And what this has to do with is like number of homes for sale. And I think this is really important because when you're in a balanced market, that's that, that dotted line, you want to have six months worth of inventory for sale. And when you hear us talk about how there aren't enough homes for sale to meet the demand of the buyer, this is really what we're talking about. So you can see right now that, um, you know, we only have about three months supply um, of homes for sale. And that's been going down over the years, right? We're, we're, we need this to go in the other direction. So we're starting to, we're starting to build that up, which is a good thing. Um, and then another thing as we talk about, I mean, how do you get more homes for sale? Well, people need to sell the homes they live in, or we need to build more new construction. And so when you look at new home starts, um, this is, and this is national information, this isn't specific to Colorado, but you can see that on average, we want to have, you know, um, 1 million. I mean, these are in thousands, right? So yeah. <laughs> 1, thousands, 1 million. I had to make sure I did that right. Um, per year. And so in 2023, we were just under that at 908. And that's sort of a dip, right? Because obviously, it costs money to build new houses, and we need buyers and interest rates went up. And there's all sorts of different factors. But this is just really showing you, you know, kind of where we're at and and what new home sales are doing. So on the flip side, we need to build more houses. And right now, if you look back at 2023 and 2022, we're hitting right at what that long-term average is of new home construction that's being sold. So that's for all of our, our data people out there, uh, <laughs> right? But new home construction is definitely an option when it comes to purchasing a home. Uh, so we're not going to talk about resale at all today. We're just going to talk about new home construction. And when we're talking about new home construction, there's custom build. And then there's production builders, which is probably what most of us are familiar with. So that's what we're going to spend most of our time on here is talking about the production builders like Richmond American Homes, Local Homes, D.R. Horton, Lennar, Classic. Um, gosh, there, there's so many, depending on if you're in Denver, the Springs, whatever. Oh, these thumbs are going up. So <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> 
right? So let's let's talk about production builders first. Denise, why don't you kick us off? Yeah. So production builders, I mean, this is this is mass production. So they have a few floor plans that you can choose from, but with production builders, it's not as much and there's not much customization. So um, you will have, you know, some floor plans to choose from and then some packages that come with it, but it'll be like three, four options maybe, Um, which is why, you know, sometimes when you see, you know, those new builds community, like they all kind of look the same, but there's that. And at least it gives you, it doesn't, you know, it, it saves you from the headache of having to like figure all that stuff out yourself. Yes. It's already there. You just kind of pick the color schemes. You pick, you know, the kind of home that you want, depending on like if it's single family, of course, uh, with townhomes, you don't get that much exterior customization part, but um, there's that. Did you want to add something? Yeah. Well, I was just going to say to the point on the floor plans, well, I mean, there's usually somewhat of a variety, like anywhere, you know, I would say like, five to seven floor plans that you can choose from but what's if you could think about it this way these these home builders i mean they've got people on their on their staff on their team that specialize in creating floor plans that maximize the space Mm -hmm. but minimize the waste right like they're very they're engineered at a level that we don't have to think about, right? Like it's, it they take into account like the features people want. Do people want a dining room? Do they not want a dining room? Do they want a bathtub? Do they not want a bathtub? Do they need a study? Do they not have a study, right? You know, um, is there a basement? Can you finish it, right? Like they really put that thought into it to give you different options based on how they know from their research and experience, people live best in their homes, yeah. right? Um, so I think that's, that's a big advantage. And then I'm going to age myself here, but I built a house back in 2014 with Meritage Homes and, um, great, great process, great builder, but, uh, and I used to work for Richmond American Homes. Um, but back in the day, building a dirt start versus something that was already built, um, you, you would, you kind of had this opportunity to pick what kind of backsplash you want, what kind of faucets you want, what kind of lights you want, what kind of cabinets you want, right? And it's always the most exciting and yet stressful part of the home building <laughs> process because it's what, you know, you might you might be under contract on a home for 450000 and then you go to the design center and now that house is $800,000, right? Because you've added yeah. in all of these customizations. In today's market, we're seeing a lot of builders to what you were saying, Denise, go to, you know what, we've got package A, package B, and package C based on, again, the research of what people are pretty much selecting, right? I mean, everyone loves the gray walls and the white backsplashes and, you know, so they're, (laughs) yeah, right? So they're, they're picking those because they're able to create value in the pricing for you and while you have a little bit of a choice, your customization in these production builds is not nearly what it used to be even even three years ago, even two years ago, right? They've really moved to everything's already picked up for you, picked out for you. Yeah, which again, it comes with pros and cons. I mean, the good thing about these faster home, like already built and already like customed for you, it's that they are completed faster. So it's like, instead of you waiting a year for you to build your home and do all that process, your home is ready in like three, four months. Um, Unless it's like a quick move in, what they call quick move in homes, those homes are nearly completed and then you can just, you know, go under contract, get all that done and be moved in in 30 days. Of course, with that one, everything is already picked up because the home is built, but you get, you know, you're able to move in in a month. So yeah, nice. You know, it is, it is not as common right now to do a, a dirt start where three years ago, a dirt start was super common. But I think the reason you're not seeing it is our interest rates are not very predictable right now. And so 
a new build's going to take anywhere from like nine months to 18 months, right? Um, a builder, when you sign a contract, has two years to complete your home. Um, and so, you know, what was happening, and I, I've, I've actually experienced this before, is, you know, back when interest rates were 3%, right? They contracted on a dirt start. They put down their earnest money. And in that nine month period, which we all did not enjoy, but in that nine month period, interest rates went up to 7%. And now all of a sudden that person could not afford or get caught, they probably could afford it, but could not get qualified for the mortgage. That's a big difference. And they lost their earnest money. They lost their house, they lost their earnest money. And so a lot of builders aren't taking that risk to do dirt starts, not all of them. There are still some out there that will do dirt start homes, but builders that were typically known for dirt starts have really started pre-plotting everything, the whole neighborhood, picking what what house goes on what lot, what the exterior is going to look like, what the packages are, and they, they get started on that house and then going to the buyer to say, hey, this house is going to be done in the next three months or 30 days, and this is what the cabinets look like, this is what the floor is, this is, and then this is the price, right? Done, here's the price. This is what you're buying it for, you know. So there's there's pros and cons to each. Some people like that dirt start process, but it's a much longer process and it's not the most cost effective, which I think the builders um, have really embraced in trying to get more people into new homes. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the interest rate part <laughs> because a lot of people forget that you can't lock in your rate until like what a month and a half before like there's there's a certain limit so if you're going under contract and your home is not going to be done in nine months a lot can happen in nine months a lot i mean the interest rate changes every single day and so it's it can be a little scary so that is yeah i'm glad yeah. that it, it, that is a a good thing that the builders are now offering that where it's like it's a faster process you don't risk you know the interest rates going up and down and you can lock in your rate and then just be moved into your home. Absolutely. And and anyone watching, I know we've got people watching on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and even right here live on, on Vimeo. Uh, if you have any questions, oh my gosh, I don't know why the thumbs up keeps coming, but <laughs> if you have any questions, definitely feel free to put them in our chat um, and we'll try to answer them. But with the financing piece, I, I'm not a lender, so don't hold me on this. I know it's a minimum of 30 days, and I think sometimes you can do a maximum of 90 days, but it costs you to lock that in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'll come with like additional costs. So um, like 45 days is the norm, like where it doesn't cost you anything. I think but, safe to say for sure 30. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it sucks because that's what a lot of people were dealing with during that time. Um, but yeah, I don't well, know. let's talk about rates because I think that's a good segue. Um, a lot of the conversations Denise, you and I are having with clients is gosh, rates are six and three quarters right now for a resale. And I see, you know, any of them, Lennar, local Richmond, you know, marketing, you know, four and a half or 4.99 or five and a half. Right. Which Yes. It's a significant discount. Um, yeah. So, you know, a lot of those builders, you know, Oakwood, Richmond, local, all of those, you know, production builders, they have their own set of lenders. And so within, you know, the same company, they work together to figure out, you they know, what is own the lender, the builder they typically own. owns the yeah. lender. So that, you know, so in you that case, this. <laughs> in that case, the builder's lender is able to, you know, give you a lot more incentives than versus having a regular lender that you can use. And so by using their preferred lender, they give you incentives like we'll cover $10,000 that can go towards your closing costs, or you can use that to write or to buy down the rate. Right. Or sometimes they, I've seen that just by you using their preferred lender, they're able to give you the $10,000 to towards your closing cost and they give you an interest rate of 5.5 .5 or 6%. It's definitely going to be under the, the market interest market rate. rate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
we had two clients that closed in February. They both got four and a half percent, 30 year fixed loans. One was a VA, one was an FHA. Yeah. And they got houses for just under $6,000 and their payments were in the low to mid threes, uh, 3,000, like 33 and 3,500 a month. Um, yeah. You know, that's, that's tough for, for, resale to compete with you you can do some buy down programs with resale that's a whole nother conversation but um it's, it's definitely been an attractive thing for the builders right now knowing that so oh we just got a question from natalie so how are new construction builders able to lower the interest rate so denise you kind of just touched on that but you know they do a buy down they they own the lender usually a builder owns their lender lending company and so they use that as incentive to buy down the rate yeah. um, to give that to you. Uh, and you can either do like a two, one buy down, which let's say interest rates are 7%. And then you've got the first year, 5%, the second year, 6%, and the, then the third year and beyond back up at that 7%. The idea there is that interest rates will lower in that two year period so that you can refi and secure a fixed rate. Um, I do prefer the fixed rate route where, you know, these clients we closed in February, they're in four and a half, 30 year fix. So this way, if the rates go below four and a half percent, awesome. But if they don't, that's okay too. Four and a half to great rate. Worry about having to refinance, keeping yep. on things. They're just set. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So um, let's talk about home buyer expenses versus builder expenses. Cause I feel like this is a big one um, that people sometimes forget. And then Natalie, I see your next question. We'll get to that in one second. Um, I I think it's very similar other than the fact that, you know, you, if, if the builder is offering these incentives and you don't have to bring as much, um, I guess, to the closing table, but you still are able, you're, you know, you still need to do earnest money. Um, you still have to do an inspection. I mean, you don't have to, but I always recommend, even if it's a new build budget for <laughs> The inspection, there's the appraisal. So the costs are very similar, but I think well, the incentive part is what attracts a lot of people. It does, but here's the other piece of it. And I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw three things in, maybe maybe more than three. But one, on the closing side of things, when you're buying new construction, typically the buyer is paying the title insurance. Mm which could be a couple thousand dollars where in a resale scenario, the seller typically pays the title insurance typically, but then also builders will typically do your front yard landscaping, but they don't do your rear landscaping fence. and it's fence. Yep. So you've got landscaping, your fence. Um, sometimes, sometimes they don't offer washer and dryer. Yep. So a lot of times washer and dryer is not included and also the refrigerator. So those mm -hmm. are expenses and window coverings. Oh, the window coverings is a yes. big one. <laughs> so sometimes they throw it in and sometimes they don't. But I want you to know, like, while you're getting these incentives and this lower interest rate and these closing costs, that's awesome, right? That puts money back in your pocket. But especially builders typically build in master plan communities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you're in a master plan community, you typically have to have your backyard done within a six month to a year period of time. You typically, your house is typically close to another house. So you're going to want to have window coverings. Um, mm -hmm. Right. And if you have pets or kids and you don't run them running into your neighbor's yard, you're going to want to put a fence up. Right. Yeah. Um, if you have a kitchen, which you will, you're typically going to want a refrigerator. And if you wear clothes, <laughs> which you typically do, you are going to want to have a washer and dryer. So just some things to think about that are additional costs when buying new construction. But it's it's good to keep an eye on these builders and their um, incentives or offerings because you'll get those builders where they're like, oh, we're having a promotion right now. We're including everything, like all yeah. of these things. And luckily, you know, Sarah and I are very tied into all the news and like uh, talking to the builders and letting yep. you know staying updated on what they're offering every single week because of course it changes um but you do get those where they're offering like everything included yeah. you know, the fence too like they're just trying to get rid of the home so yeah. that's, that's when the good deal is 
So Natalie asked a question, should you hire a real estate agent for new construction? Well, we're real estate agents. So of course we're going to say yes, of course. Um, But it's very easy for people, for you to just walk into the sales office and talk to a representative there. But the contract is made by the builder. And of course the sales rep is going to represent the builder. And so you're going to want someone to represent you as, you know, the buyer, the buyer's agent, have that relationship because there is money involved and there's certain things in the contract that maybe won't make make sense so you're gonna need someone to explain that to you and then of course you know someone needs to earn this money so someone needs to fight for you like the builder is not i mean they'll be nice to you right but at the end of the day they want to protect their interests a realtor doesn't cost you anything in this market right now. Typically, any success fees typically are paid for by the builder. Um, So you have someone representing your best interest where if you're in it on your own, you know, the builder is representing their best interest, not yours. Yeah. 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 So that's a good question, Natalie. Question. Very good question. All right. So that's a very high level on new construction. Denise and I have a lot of experience with a lot of different builders from Colorado Springs to Denver. So if you have further questions on that, please reach out. Um, I want to spend a, just a small amount of time talking about custom builds because I get this question a lot. Um, well, Denise does too, I'm sure. Um, you know, I think it will be cheaper for me to buy land and build a house than to buy resale. And while there could be some cost efficiencies, I think there's a lot of things people don't think about, um, especially like if you're moving here from somewhere else, right? We've got a lot of land development costs. So first off, you, you know, you need to buy the land and typically you have to pay cash for the land. Depending on how much the land costs, you typically have to pay cash for the land. Even if you get a new construction loan to build the house that you want to build with a custom builder, your purchase of the land as cash is considered like your down payment, right? It's considered, you know, sometimes you like if you're buying a $200,000 piece of land versus a $500,000 piece of land, right? You might need to do a portion and roll that into the construction loan. But typically, Mm -hmm. if you're in a position where you want to buy land and you need to finance it, there are very few lenders that finance land. Typically, it will be within a construction loan. And then, um, or you might do like seller financing. So that's probably a whole nother topic of like land purchase financing that we can do on a webinar. So I'll add that to our list. Yeah. Um, but no matter what, keep in mind, you're going to need at least like a 30% down payment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred, a hundred percent. Um, so There's that piece of it. And then you also have like improved land versus unimproved land. So improved land means like your utilities are there, right? Whether it's a well and septic, it's already there. Whether the the water tap is there, whether maybe not paid, but available, right? Um, Electricity, gas are somehow connected to the land. That's improved land. But unimproved land, you have to figure all those expenses out. Drilling the well or paying the water tap fee or installing the septic tank? Um, How do you get electricity to the land? Where do you pull from? Is there a gas line? Do you need to have propane, right? These are all those types of things. Then you've got excavation costs. You've got to get a driveway to the lot. You need to test the soil. We've got expansive clay soils here in Colorado, right? Are you going to have a basement? Do you need to dig down? I mean, there's so many like different things that come up. Um, Another one I get is people want to buy land and then put their like RV on it until they're ready to buy a house. Um, Mm -hmm. There there are county restrictions on that. I can tell you in Douglas County, Colorado, which is in the South Metro of Denver, you can't buy land and put temporary housing on it. You can only have, you know, full housing or container homes. That's another big one I get. Like, they want to build the storage container homes. Um, there are a lot of counties, especially on the front range, that you can't do that in. Yeah, um, there's you have to be able, yeah, a little bit more remote. So there's just all sorts of different things when it comes to custom that doesn't necessarily make it cheaper. Um, you know, not to say it's impossible, but custom builds just require uh, a lot more steps. Where if you're doing a production build they've figured all that out for you. That's where they can get the cost efficiencies and new construction. 
Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Whew, well, that was a lot. <laughs> 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 right exactly and i get a lot of those questions too where it's like hey i just want to buy land and then put an rv in there or you know just a mobile home yep and i'm like okay, well we have to figure out if that's even allowed allowed um, so, yep and know. typically again not to make this about land we'll we'll do a whole other webinar on land <laughs> but if you find a piece of land in colorado that's under let's just say seventy five thousand dollars that's probably not in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. Or usually there's a reason, right? You can't build on it. Yeah. It's not, accept- you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. know, I get a lot of that where people are like, I want a piece of land for under a hundred grand. And not that it's not out there. Uh, and usually it's, I want five acres for under a hundred grand. Like, you know, <laughs> that's just, it's just hard to find. It's just, yeah. if you find something like that, you're going to want to dig a little bit more because it, it probably has some restrictions that, make it that price. So that does anyone else have any other questions for us? Um, If you're on Facebook and Instagram, we'll go back and look at those and and try to follow up and answer those questions for you. Awesome. All right. We only covered the surface because there's still so much more (laughs) taxes. Yeah, we didn't even touch it. Here's the thing. If you're interested in new construction as an option, reach out to Denise or I, let's talk about it a little bit more. We sell lots of new construction homes. We sell land. We sell, I mean, all of it, right? We know the ins and outs um, and can help you decide if that's a good route because I mean, new construction is great. It's shiny and new and beautiful. And there's a lot of, a lot there's of great things. There's pros and cons to everything. Yes. yes. <laughs> but but I do love construction. new construction. We just want to make sure you're going into it eyes wide open because it can be a really great opportunity if you've got the right expectations. So with that, Let's see. I'm going to put up our QR code here. Oh, yes. We've got... So just remain here, Cafe Casas, Friday, 8 to 9. Be there. Yep. <laughs> and also, um, what is it? March 23rd, we're going to yes. be at Reunion. March 23rd, uh, from 11 to 1, we're going to be at Reunion. We're going to have a an Easter bunny, um, an egg hunt, like so many fun stuff for... Adults and kids too. Yeah, that's at the Enjoy. coffee house there. That'll be awesome. Um, we've got Dingus Day, our annual Polish celebration on April 1st coming up. Uh, that's in Castle Rock at 105 West. And then we also, our webinar is coming up for March. Next Monday, we're going to be talking about house hacking. I'm so excited. Uh, that's going to be with Gavin Ekstrom at Cross Country Mortgage. And then on the 25th, we're going to be talking about first time home buyer stuff. So we've got some good topics. Yeah, pretty busy yeah, month. <laughs> I know. And the QR code, you'll get lots of information. We hope to see you Friday for free coffee. And we hope you call us and talk to us about new construction. Yeah. All right. All right. Have a great rest of your Monday, everybody. We'll we'll see you next week or Friday. Oh, oh, or Friday. <laughs> or Friday. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye.